A favorite destination for boat passengers was Bird Island. It was just six miles from the mouth of the Provo River, but at a cruising speed of eight miles per hour, a round trip and a short visit to the island to look for bird eggs could take up to four hours. If you walk through there, you had to watch where you step because they lay their eggs right in the rocks. And they take people out there and we tell them, be careful where you step. We took hundreds of people out there and they was, uh, they'd walk down the, we'd go down the south side and they'd walk up the long peninsula into the bird area. So that island has been a very, very important place. Even right now, the biggest catfish, the biggest carp, and everything else is right by the island. It's been used by uh, fishermen and duck hunters uh, heavily through the years. And of course, it was a drying card for people who wanted to see something as strange as an island in Utah Lake when they rode out on the showboat. Utah Lake was, and still is, a marvelous place for the nature enthusiast and sportsman. The lake is home to an array of waterfowl, many that migrate from the western Canadian prairies. Buffleheads and mergansers can be found in the marshes around her shoreline. It's just great to see all this wildlife. That's always been a big love of mine on this lake. I fish all around the lake. In fact, if we can't find fish in one place, we usually just move from harbor to harbor to harbor or beach to beach. And uh, we may cover three, four, five, six places on the lake in a, in a day. Uh, so I fish the lake about 20 times a year on the average since I was about uh, 12 years old. It's uh, treated me real good. The coolest thing about Utah Lake is that it probably has more different kinds of fish and fishermen than any other lake in the state of Utah. We like to fish this lake year-round and the fish are just outstanding. It attracts a great diversity of people. The main reason I come down here really isn't to fish. I really enjoy fishing and catching walleye and all these other fish, but you know, the most fun is, is visiting with uh, people, coming down here with friends and just a great lake to come and, and just recreate on. Some who grew up around Utah Lake have rarely left her side. Leaving the lake, in their minds, would be like losing an old friend. Don Hawk has lived every one of his 91 years here. I live now within two blocks of where I was born. And I have lived that, uh, lived not, not much further than that all my life. We moved up by the park. That's the furthest, furthest I've been from where I was born. We used to go swimming down the lake all the time. What we used to do is go, go skinny dipping. We built a little sailboat and used to go out in the, out in the lake on that. I remember one time they had a Fourth of July, uh, the fireworks down to the lake, and we went out. Uh, we 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 got us a boat and went out and watched the fireworks out on, from from out in the lake. We used to, uh, well. In the wintertime, we ice skated down there. That was, uh, we, we ice skated uh, out to Bird Island many times. Ice skating was marvelous. I remember all through my high school years, we used to skate down there. We could skate as far as Bird Island and back, and sometimes the ice would be so clear and then other times, of course, the waves underneath would uh, create a disturbance. And quite often, it would break up. And as young people will that are daring, we would jump the cracks of, of the ice as they split open, and we jump from one to the other. It's a wonder we didn't drown, but we didn't. And so it. It proved to be just a wonderful uh, winter time for a lot of us. Roland Strong inherited his father's love of Utah Lake and was one of the first to surf its waters. But the water sports have been good down there for years. We had a, we call it a surfboard. Somebody called it an aquaplane, but the board was hooked to the boat. About a three by five piece of wood plywood, 
And then he had two ropes come back in the front. You hook it to the boat, and you could get a good ride. You could, same way as they are now. Now, they, of course, they're jumping and doing flips and all this stuff, but you could do the same speed on a, on the turn. You had to get back on the one corner, and you had that one corner, and you could spray water over the, for a long ways. The only trouble was, if you fell off, and the boat upside down, and the rope boom the other way, the board would dive. So you had to make sure you cut your engine fast. If somebody fell off, you'd put the thing in the mud. During the late 1920s, informal speedboat races were held at Geneva Resort. And in the 1960s, Memorial Day weekend drew crowds from all over the country who reveled in watching the daring and the lightning fast captain their boats to victory. Every Memorial Day it was boat races down at the lake. And they would start in the harbor and they would go out into the lake and race out there and then come back in. Well, the harbor was always filled with people. It was, it was a big thing for Provo to have these boat races on Memorial Day. It was not an exceedingly great place to race, unfortunately, because it's such a shallow lake that the winds stirred up the waves and made it pretty dangerous. I think it was for the national championships. One of the drivers perished. And uh, from that time on, uh, the boat races became uh, less frequent. But during the 40s, it was a big thing. Thousands of people would go down to the old Provo Boat Harbor and watch those boat races, and it was exciting. For generations, boaters and water skiers have gathered and played on Utah Lake. But over the years, the number of people visiting the lake has slowly decreased. Today, considering how close Utah Lake is to such a large population area, she is underutilized. For many, her enduring charm will never fade. The lake quietly goes on, proving her worth in countless ways.